What is going on guys, you're watching Dev Dreamer, and this is lesson number 30 in our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to be learning all about array properties and methods. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson number 30. So let's start then with the length property. To find the length of an array, we can use the length property. So let's first go ahead and create an array. So we're gonna say let supers, we're creating an array of superheroes. Okay, let's go for Superman, Batman, let's say Flash, and let's go for one more, let's say Aquaman. Okay, perfect, so we've got our array of supers. Now let's use the length property to find the length of this array. So let's just console log our result. So we can say console.log supers, which is the name of our array. Then we're gonna say dot length. Okay, let's save. And in the console then, we get the number four because this array has a length of four. That's because there are one, two, three, four items in this array. Now we can also use the length property to find the last value in an array. So in this example, it's going to be the value of Aquaman. Now we do that by doing supers and then square brackets. And so if you recall from the previous lesson, the way that we access values inside of an array, we use the array name and then square brackets, and then we need to provide an index number. Now, since arrays are zero indexed, the last value is always going to be length minus one. So we're gonna say supers.length minus one. So supers.length is four, because there are four items in this array. Minus one is going to be three, and so that's always going to be the last item in our array. So for example here, it's zero, one, two, and Aquaman has an index value of three. So let's save, and in the console then, we get Aquaman. Now, another thing to know about the length property is that the length property is mutable, which means that we can change its value. So we know that supers.length here has a value of four, but we can say supers.length, and we can assign this to a different value, let's say two. Now, if we save and we console log our array, so console.log supers, in the console in here, we can see because we've specified that supers.length should be two now, our array only consists of one, two values. Okay, Superman and Batman. So using length like this will mutate or change our original array. As you can see here, our original array of supers now returns only two results. Now, what do you think would happen if we then went on to say supers.length is now equal to three? Now, if you console.log supers, let's see what we get. So now we get one, two, three values still. However, this third value is an empty value. Remember at this point, okay, Flash and Aquaman no longer exist. And so that's why we specify that supers.length should be three. The third value is simply an empty value. Okay, so that's all about the length property. Let's now move on to looking at the array methods. So let's get rid of all these. And now the first method we're going to learn about is index of. So index of is used to find out if an array contains a particular value. If it does, it returns the index at which the value is placed. If not, then the index returned is minus one. So let's console.log our result. So we can say console.log our array name, which is supers.index of. And then in parentheses, we're going to supply one of our values. So let's go for, let's go for flash. And just above this, let's just console.log the supers array as well. Let's save. Okay, so this is our supers array. And over here, you can see that we've got the number two. And that's because the index of flash is placed at the number two position in our array, okay? Superman is zero, Batman is one, and Flash is two. If we choose a value that doesn't exist inside our array, so let's change this for, let's say, Green Lantern. Save. As you can see, we get minus one returned. Okay, so that's index of. The next method we're going to learn about is called includes. Includes basically returns a Boolean value, so true or false, if the array contains the value. So let's go ahead and say console.log again. We're gonna log this result. Let's say supers.includes. And this time let's go for Batman. So we're checking to see if supers includes the value of Batman. Let's go ahead and save. And the console returns true because Batman is included inside here. Once again, just to show you, if we were to include a value that does not exist inside our array, then the console will return false. Now, another thing to note about includes is that it is case sensitive. So if we were to say Batman in all lowercase, then this still returns false because this is seen to be different from this. Okay, 
Next, we're going to learn about the pop and push methods. These are used to add and remove elements from an array. We can pop items out of an array or push items into an array. So let's first take a look at pop. So the pop method will remove the last item from the array. So let's go ahead and say console.log supers.pop and then let's log our supers array. And as you can see here, first we get Aquaman. So this is console.logging the value that was removed, the last value in our array, which is Aquaman. And then here we're console.logging the array. So here we've got three items in the array, Superman, Batman and Flash, and Aquaman has been removed. We can also use shift, which is similar to pop in that it removes an item from an array. However, shift removes the first item in array. So pop removes the last item, shift removes the first item. So here, if we were to say supers.shift and save this, now we get the first value inside our array, which is Superman, and the supers array now returns Batman, Flash, and Aquaman. So pop and shift are used to remove items from an array. Pop removes the last item and shift removes the first item. So that's the pop and shift methods. Once again, pop and shift are used to remove items from an array. Next, we're going to take a look at the opposite versions of these. So push and unshift. Push is basically the opposite version of pop and unshift is the opposite version of shift. So let's take a look at push first. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. And let's say supers dot push. And what push will do then, as I said, it's the opposite version of pop. Push will add a new item to the end of the array. So here then we can't just say supers.push because we're adding a new item. So in here then we need to supply this with a value. So let's go ahead and say your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Let's go ahead and save. And now our new array consists of Superman, Batman, Flash, Aquaman, and finally Spider-Man. So push has added this new value to the end of our array. Okay, and now finally let's take a look at unshift. So remember shift removed the first item of our array. Unshift is going to add a new item to the beginning of our array. So we're going to say supers dot unshift. And once again, we need to supply a value. Let's go for Thor. Let's save. So our array now consists of five items with Thor at the beginning. Okay, let's keep going. The next one we're going to look at is the concat method. Now the concat method can be used to merge an array with another array. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get rid of this. Let's add Spider-Man back in by saying supers dot push and Spider-Man. Let's just log our array. Okay, so we've got our original items and then at the beginning we've got Thor and then at the end we've got Spider-Man. So now what we're going to do using the concat method is we're going to create a new array and then we're going to merge this array with that new array. So here then I'm going to say let new supers be assigned the value of supers, which is our original array. Okay, the one up here. Then we're going to say dot concat and then inside here we're going to supply our new array. Okay, so our new array then consists of following superheroes, Wolverine, Cyclops, and Professor X. And so now, if we console.log new supers, what we should get is a merging of those two arrays. So new supers, let's save. Perfect, so now we get our original array, and then we've also got these three new values, Wolverine, Cyclops, and Professor X, inside this array. So using the concat method then, we've taken two arrays, this one here, and this one here. We've merged them together, and store them in a new value called new supers. Now, another thing to note about the concat method is that this will not change our original array. It creates a new array combining both arrays. And here we've actually assigned it to a new variable. We could have just said, let supers be assigned the value of this. So rather than assigning it to a new variable, we're just reassigning it to the original variable up here. But just to show you this again, so after console.log new supers, we're gonna say console.log supers, which was the original array, let's save. And once again, we still get that original array intact. So again, using the concat method will not change our original array. The next one we're going to look at is the join method. So let's get rid of all this. So the join method can be used to turn the array into a string with all our values separated by commas. So here then, we're going to say console.log supers.join and let's save. And that returns a string of all of our arrays. And as you can see by default, they're comma separated. We can actually supply our own value inside here. So if I said um, comma space, now we've got a comma space in between each of our values. We could also supply something else in here. We could say this pipe symbol. Okay, now we've got this pipe symbol separating them. So using the join method, it takes that array and turns it into a string. Okay, the next method we're going to learn about is called the split method. Now what this does is basically the opposite to join. 
So whereas join takes an array and turns it into a string, split will take a string and turn that into an array. So for now, let's just go ahead and comment this array out. Down here, let's just say let supers be assigned the value of a string. So once again, this time as a string, we're going to say Superman, Batman, and let's just go for one more, let's say Flash. Now we're going to say let supers array be assigned the value of our string name, which was supers dot split. And inside here, we're going to say comma space. So if we actually console.log supers array now, as you can see in the console, we've created an array containing our string values of Superman, Batman, and Flash. So once again, join takes an array and turns it into a string. Split takes a string and turns it into an array. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. I'm commenting this as well. Now the next one is called slice. So the slice method creates a subarray. In other words, it cuts out or slices our array from one position to another. So let's just get some more supers in here. And now let's say we only wanted to pull out the X-Men. So here we're going to say, let X-Men be assigned the value of supers, which was our original array, dot slice, and then in parentheses here, six and nine. Now this can be a bit confusing, so please do bear this in mind. This will not include the second array index. And so if you want to include that, we would need to go one higher. So for example here, six refers to Wolverine. We've got zero, one, in fact, what we can do here, we can just log supers, be easier to see it. Okay, if we open this up, got all the index numbers here. So six then, okay, refers to Wolverine, but we can see here that Professor X is actually in position number eight, but here we've said number nine. And once again, that's because if we do want that second array index, then we need to go one higher than what it actually is. So if we just console.log X-Men here, and save, we can see now X-Men is an array which consists of Wolverine, Cyclops, and Professor X. Also do bear in mind that slice is a non-destructive method, which means our original array of supers is still intact. So if we save this, we can see we still have our original supers array. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is splice. So things can get a bit confusing here. So we've looked at slice, this is now called splice. So the splice method removes items from an array and then replaces them with new ones. So here we're going to say supers dot splice and let's say we wanted to remove spider-man and replace it with the green lantern so here we would say the index value of spider-man so we've got zero one two three four and five so the first number is the index of the value we want to start at the second number is how many items we want to remove from this point in the array so one means just remove this item and no more finally we need to supply the new value so once again comma separated and as a string i'm going to say green lantern. Let's save and console log the array. So console.log supers and check this out guys. Spider-Man has now been removed and it's been replaced by green lantern. Now what if we wanted to include a new value inside this array without actually removing another value? And let's say we wanted to include this value not at the beginning or end but somewhere in between. Well we can use splice to insert a value inside an array without removing any items. And we do this by simply setting the second value here to zero. If we save this now, we can see we have 10 items in our array. Green Lantern now occupies the fifth index. And Spider-Man is now in the sixth index position. Now, another thing we can do with Splice is we can actually delete items from an array. So in the previous lesson, we learned that we could delete an array item by using the delete keyword. But we also saw that rather than removing the index completely, it simply changed the index value to undefined. With the splice method, we can actually delete an item and remove it completely. And the way that we do that is we don't supply a new value. And the way that this works is we first apply the index number of the value we want to delete. So let's say that we want to delete um, Aquaman. Okay, so this is index value number three. So we say three. And then since we only want to target Aquaman here, we're just going to say one. So if we save this and open up our array, we can see that now Aquaman has been removed. So the splice method then can be very helpful because it can be used to not only add items to our array at a specific index, but also to remove items. However, we should be very careful when using splice because splice is a destructive method. In other words, splice is destructive because it alters our original array, as you can see here with Aquaman now being removed. Okay, so we've got two more array methods we're going to learn about. The next one is reverse, and this is quite self-explanatory. 
The reverse method, big surprise, reverses the order of our array. So here we can say supers dot reverse. And now if we console.log supers, you can see here that it's now Professor X that is in the zero index position and Superman is in the eighth index position. So all of our array items have now been reversed. Finally in this lesson, let's learn about the sort method. The sort method will sort our array alphabetically. So let's say supers dot sort. And if we console.log our array, so console.log supers. And now all of our values have been organized in alphabetical order. So we've got Aquaman first, then Batman, Cyclops, and so on. So guys, that's all about the different array methods and how to use them. Let's go ahead and summarize this lesson. So arrays have many useful methods that we can use to do some really cool things. We can remove values using pop and shift. We can add values using push and unshift. We can use methods to transform arrays into strings and vice versa. And we can also take an array and pull out some values and turn that into a new array. So let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. So we've got three tasks for this lesson. For task number one, I want you to create an array with the following fruits, apple, orange, and banana, and then use the correct array method to add the fruits cherry and pineapple to the beginning of the array, then add the fruits plum and grapes to the end of the array, once again, using the relevant array method. For task two, replace orange with lemon using the splice method. And then finally for task number three, I want you to sort the values alphabetically, and then of course, console log the results. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, try these out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. So how'd you get on then? Let's see. So first of all, we need to go ahead and create our fruits array. So we're going to say let fruits be assigned the value of apple, orange, and banana. Okay, and we need to add two fruits, cherry and pineapple, to the beginning of the array. And if you recall, what we're looking for here is the unshift method. So we're going to say fruits dot unshift, and we're looking for cherry and pineapple. And finally, for task one, we need to add the fruits plum and grapes to the end of the array. So to add items to the end of an array, we use the push method. So we can say fruits dot push. And here we're looking for plum and grapes. Okay, let's go ahead and just console.log fruits to see if that's worked. Perfect. So in our array, then we have our original values of apple, orange and banana. Then we have cherry and pineapple, which we included using unshift. And finally, plum and grapes, which we included using push. For task number two, we need to replace orange with lemon using the splice method. So we're going to say fruits dot splice. So if you recall, the way that splice works is we're looking for two numbers and then a new value. The first number is the index position of the value we want to replace. So here we're looking to replace orange, which has an index value of three. So we're going to say three. The second number is how many elements after this we want to remove. We, of course, just want to remove the one here. So we're going to say one, which is just orange. And then finally, we need to supply this with a new value. So a new value is going to be lemon. Let's go ahead and just copy this. We're going to console.log our array again and save. Perfect. So here we can see orange has been replaced with lemon. Okay. And finally, for task number three, we need to sort the values alphabetically. So nice and easy. We just say fruits dot sort. And you can see here, all of our fruits are now sorted alphabetically. Okay, so while done completing those tasks, that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to be learning about some more array methods, and these are specifically array iterator methods. So using iterator methods, we can actually loop over our array and perform some sort of action on each value. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.